All right, here we go. The dose episode. I think four, the dose episode four, and we have a little different special guest coming in today. We have John, who has been on the show before. John, say hey. Hey. And we have Lindsay, who is John's girlfriend. Lindsay, say hey. Hey. Boom, there you go. You got the intros. (laughs) You got Lindsay and you got John. Um, As you can see in their pictures, that's how we're going to recognize them. So, okay, let's start. Let's start with, we're going to make this like one of those... I don't, I don't want to call it like, we'll call it like a first day of school. You know, whenever you go to first day of school and they say like, oh, tell me a little something about yourself. And you got like a couple sentences to do it. That's what we're going to do. So, John, describe Lindsay. You're actually going to describe <laughs> Lindsay. So, if, if, if you were to be making like a bio for Lindsay, but you only had a couple sentences, what would you say? Make this good. Yeah. First off, I would say, have you ever seen Wonder Woman? <laughs> She's basically an Amazonian warrior uh, princess, I would say. <laughs> uh, she's like some kind of amalgam of all the Disney princesses put together, except the lame ones. Uh, she yeah. absolutely loves weightlifting and sports. If there was a female professional football league, she would probably be the starting quarterback of whatever team would win the equivalent of the Super Bowl. If Stephen Hawking was a female, uh, that would be Lindsay. She's basically <laughs> this like metamorphosis of superiority. So let me get this right. One, she's a tall Amazonian princess, strong, loves to lift, could be a potential quarterback on a warrior. On a, oh yeah, my bad. Warrior could be a potential <laughs> quarterback on like let's say like a lingerie football team because that's the closest thing I to mean, professional I mean, women's. Say, she could probably be the quarterback of the New England Patriots. Okay, that yeah, is that I is can a far. Throw the ball and okay, catch fine. It. If we're giving that's a realistic far. description, the Cleveland Browns. But, but, okay. I mean, hey, they're football. the worst team. Hey, it doesn't matter. You're still in the NFL, getting paid. You're in the NFL sure. as a female. I mean, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> little li- oh, and Disney princesses. We forgot about that. Yeah. So that sums it up. I had to consolidate because you were definitely over the couple sentence of rules, or we oh, had some run-ons. I didn't realize there was. I didn't realize we had like a 140 Twitter. Yeah, like this. There. This wasn't allowed. Like, hey, <laughs> write this dissertation. That's what you started doing. Oops. So let's see yeah. if Lindsay can follow the rules. Lindsay, go ahead, and you have a couple sentences to describe John. How would you describe John? I can't John? follow that. That was a, an incredible description. Well, come on. Let's see what you got. Let's let's get them creative juices flowing. He just bragged about you so much. Now, now you have to step up to the plate. Gosh. Wait, can I do this right, at the end of the podcast? What? I need to think about it. No, see, that's the point. You're not allowed to think about it. Oh. Wow, John's just not memorable is what I'm hearing. Yeah. If, somebody, if somebody asks you to describe me, wow. this is what yeah. they get. Yeah, like if someone, if someone walks up and says, hey, you know, like I'd like to take you out to dinner. And then you're like, no, I have a boyfriend, right? And then they're like, oh, well, describe him just to make sure that he's not fake. What would you say? He's you superior to all human beings. Okay. Oh, Why? Okay. Because he just is. Because he <laughs> said he is. <laughs> wow. John has an I, ego. I don't know. <laughs> John has an ego. ego. I, don't, I don't like how I sound. Wait, bad. yeah. John no, thinks but... he's God. What the heck? Okay, okay. How about this? How about no, this? No, okay, but here's the thing. He he does act like a superior being. Okay. To strangers. Okay. But when it comes to me, he he does well. Sometimes he does. <laughs> See, okay, John is just, he's the most John is such a jerk, met. is what we're hearing. No, he's not. <laughs> he's not. He's very unique because he's a, he has a very ridiculous thought process in all things. Now, this is true. This is very yeah, true. Yeah, very true. I'll agree with this. All right, so we have ridiculous, wannabe, <laughs> omnipotent ruler of the universe. But he's very nice. Who he is a, who is better than everyone because thought. he said he's better than everyone. God. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember ever saying that. <laughs> John, you don't have to say it. I don't, your I, don't very, I don't sound very good. Okay. All right. Well, that is a uh, that's a that that was a great <laughs> explanation of both of y'all. Wow. So I'm going to give a realistic expectation of both of y'all. How about that? All right. Now it's my turn. You don't even know me. No, I know enough. Okay. It's only a couple sentences. You guys went way too in-depth. 
So the way I would describe Lindsay is she's not an Amazonian woman, like John said. But, but, but she's very nice. She does a lot to help out my friend John. That's what I know. I know that she's caring towards her dog that they have together, which is quote unquote their child pretty much. That's what I will deem the dog. And I also know that she is smart as she is completing her master's program. And she is, well, despite the beginning there, she is an articulate young woman. Now for John, (laughs) for John, I would say John is, (sighs) John is this very, unique is a good word because exactly yeah yeah unique was a good explanation i'll give you that john is a unique human as he is very like smart but at the same time with some common stuff he like isn't as smart as you would think he is and then what i would say is though he has high aspirations he really wants to provide for whoever he is deemed like in his life so whether it be like in His one case, Emma as his little love child and his girlfriend right now, Lindsay. And on top of that, he is an aspiring doctor that I think could do more, but he's scared for some reason. But I think he could do more than just be a normal surgeon. I think he could be a neurosurgeon. That's what I'm going to (laughs) say. That's my, that's my description. Yeah, I don't disagree. Yeah, see, that was, that was fire. Yeah, I think those are pretty accurate descriptions of us. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So now that we got like the intros out the way and we got a little bit of game plan out the way, let's uh, let's talk about, I guess, we'll talk, we'll start by a little like relationship info. So like, how did y'all meet? Like, how did the intro happen between you two? All right. So basically I was posted up with like my gang, you know, gang <laughs> gang. And then Lindsay just like spots me from afar and we're at like okay. this you know, this place of social interaction. And right. It's just like, oh my gosh. So are there just, just women like frolicking around you at this point? Or oh, what? I mean, just tons, but I'm ignoring okay. all of them. Okay, okay, I mean, okay. My pirates are, ta- are chatting them up. Got I'm it. Like, I'm just ignoring them because I don't play those games. Right, obviously. But at this time, at this time, this is a few years ago, I'm just like, I got to be a doctor. I got to get into medical school. I yeah, you were focused up. Women. Right, you were focused yeah, two years ago. Yeah, and then she like looks over and sees me and then she's like, whoa, is that Brad Pitt? No, 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 no. I said, whoa, was that Shang from Mulan? There, okay. (laughs) She's like, whoa, is that Brad Pitt? I need to find out. And and then, so she actually, her and her cousin, who was a mutual point of contact, uh, actually came over to our table. Okay. But all my pirates just started swooping on her hard. So I just. On the cousin or Lindsay? On both. And so I. Oh, dang, they were thirsting. Yeah. So I just wrote Lindsay (laughs) off. I was just like, whatever you know one of my friends is gonna chat her up and right that'll be like his bay for the night so for the whatever. night you thought she was one of those i i didn't know you know i didn't know her at all gotcha i was just in my zone of like no woman would ever <laughs> catch my eye at this point i cannot be derailed from getting okay in. got you i agree i agree with this this is an yeah. accurate explanation of yourself not so much of the story but of yourself <laughs> this is exactly <laughs> what happened and uh and so you know her and her little group that that they have they ended up just like conjoining with our group as we kind of went around uh you know like the bar scene that night okay but i mean neither of us really liked that at all but that's like what all of our friends wanted to do so uh and from there it just happened yeah no from there uh i we kind of persuaded people actually (laughs) Did I ever tell you the story of of why we left, uh, like, the <laughs> bars and the restaurants and all that that night? No. So uh, let's just say a mutual friend that we both know who was up there with us okay. uh, was, was drinking pretty heavily and, I guess, caught a stomachache. And in the restaurant or area where Lindsay and I actually met each other, he went to the bathroom and I guess he managed to get <laughs> some kind of fecal matter on Whoa. the back of his shirt. It splashed up on the back of his shirt when he flushed the toilet. And so he's like, John, we got to get back to our place by any means necessary. I'm begging you. And so then we just like audibled really hard trying to convince everybody that we need to, get, need to go back home. 
okay then. And so the vi- so we kind of just finagled it to actually get everybody back to our place. Right. And then and then that is whenever I actually first ever got to start talking to Lindsay. Okay then. Because we were in our kitchen, and and then the combo started. Yeah, because I was just sitting there cubing, you know, like I said, not kidding or, about the whole like. Or no was rule. it just getting late and you were getting lonely? No. <laughs> and you were like, you know what? I'm going to chat up and just see what this is about. No, this is back in my like, I don't go to bed till like 3 or 4 a.m. days. So oh, okay. So me now. Got it. All. Yeah, it, not late at all. But I was cubing and then she's just like, whoa, Brad Pitt lookalike can cube. And so she was trying to chat me up like, wait a minute, he's cubing. Which means clearly he's like some kind of a beautiful mind guy. So right. I have to woo him by claiming that I love math. And that was like how she started the conversation. She's just like, I love math. We talk about it at dinner. Okay. And then and then from there things It worked. Just... It caught my it caught my ear. I was like, Wow, I've never had a girl tell me she loves math. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna pause the story there for a second. <laughs> and now I'm gonna ask Lindsay for the truth. Yeah, but, <laughs> but, okay. real story. but I, I want the I, I, I want the concise version of it. I don't want the all the extra details like he just gave us. I want just the, like the very concise version, but the truth. Go. Okay, we were out, and I was with my group of friends. Okay. He was with his group of friends. Mutual friends among the groups. We met up, and yeah, like you said, we went back to uh, his apartment. I immediately saw the cube and was like, oh my gosh, you can solve a Rubik's Cube. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I did talk about math. There were no other women all around him. I mean, I, I figured this much, but yeah. I just oh, wanted to make also, sure. At the time, he didn't know he wanted to go to medical school. So at the time, he was still in limbo, I'm assuming. Yeah. This when he was still trying to decide what he really wanted no, to do. No, no, no. Whenever we met, I John? Oh. No, that didn't come until after because <laughs> because remember when we took that little hiatus? That was because you then realized, wow. oh, I want to go to medical school. Wow. Now we get the truth. See, so it's hard for me to remember exactly when. But it's hard for you to remember. Defer, for I'm you to remember. That she, she is probably right. For all people I, to remember. I remember everything. But I know for sure within within like a month or two of us meeting i knew that that's what i wanted yeah <laughs> but you didn't know that on the clearly thing. john didn't know so i don't so then i don't remember why i don't know maybe maybe july 25th 2017 okay 15. don't even act like you're so cool you forgot our anniversary last year but i remember you didn't even get me anything i remembered it awkward <laughs> <laughs> okay we're gonna move on past that little bit right there <laughs> okay so i'll i'll summarize y'all were out john saw well actually i think mutual friend introduced you guys started talking to each other kicked it off went back to the well you didn't kick it off technically at that point you went back to the apartment once you got there saw the cube got interested that was the conversation starter from there you just started talking on a daily basis right well yeah so the only reason we ever started talking, though, and this actually brings up an interesting point that okay. we should discuss, uh, is so I, like I took her and her cousin home because okay. you know that's how we knew her, and uh, I dropped them off, and for whatever reason, you know, she managed to do enough that I was just like, huh, I want to keep talking to her, huh. and so I asked her because I was unsure whether to just ask her for a number, you know, be a man, or just ask her <laughs> for the Snapchat. And so I was like, you know what? I don't want to come off as being like a creep. I don't really know her that well. And so I just asked for the Snapchat and she gave it to me. But, you know, later on, I asked her if she would have given me her number. And she's like, and she says, yeah, that's basically the same thing as asking for a Snapchat. And what do you think about that? That's what I'm saying. Okay. I think so that let me. The let number me... is more personal. Yeah. I'm going to say that the Snapchat is so like. I feel like that's so easy, like, going, but I could see how, like, maybe perception of a Snapchat, like, if you were to talk to people that don't use Snapchat every day, right, or don't, like, use it as a main form of communication, they would see them on the same intimacy level, because in people's brains, like, Snapchat, like, they just think, like, oh, I'm sending them pictures of myself all the time, like, I could see how that would be intimate, not even, like, nude pictures, I'm just talking about, like, you know, like, a picture in general, like, so I guess I could see that, 
but I'm with you as like if if I were to try to get like some girl's information, the easier one I would think would be her Snapchat. Yeah, I agree. See, I just think it it's the same in that setting because it's not like we were talking about Snapchat or anything. Just out of the blue, he asked me for my Snapchat name. So to me, that's the same as asking for my number. Uh, yeah. She was getting out of the car. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, I will say it's definitely easier. And I, I'm assuming that's probably like the first reason why. It was just kind of like, it's easier. And it's, in our minds, as a guy anyway, it is a less barrier of entry to just be like, what's your Snapchat? Than like, hey, give me your number. Yeah. Because, like, you know, asking for a Snapchat, they could be like, oh, we're just, like, going to be friends. But if a dude straight up asks you for your number, like, you just immediately know, like, oh, exactly. he's trying to swoop. It's it's more platonic. Yeah. At least it has the platonic potential. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that one. Yeah. And so what's, what's funny is I, you know, I almost got hesitant to even continue talking with her after she actually <laughs> Hey, no, 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 no. After what? After she added me on Snapchat, because I saw her Snapchat score. Oh, so you just oh. immediately were like, dang, and she I just snaps like, everybody. Whoa, this girl uses Snapchat way too much. And that's like just one of my things. Like, I don't need to be, like, I'm not interested in girls that need that kind of attention. Right. You just but don't, you, you don't want you someone that's completely to... wired in all the time. Yeah. But then you tried to find me on social media and realize that I don't have it. Actually, I did see you on Facebook. Yeah, some, something happened because <laughs> I did deactivate my account. And I had no idea what ha- that it didn't deactivate. Until like two quickly. months after I met John, he was like, oh yeah, by the way, you have a Facebook. Yeah, like it was clear though that it was pretty inactive. But yeah, I used to Interesting. have one. Interesting. So I'm going to... When, at what point, and this is always something I was kind of curious on, at what point did you actually tell us, John, that, like, you were dating Lindsay? Because I feel like, Austin and I feel like this had to be, like, y'all were, like, four months into actually dating. Not just, like, talking, but, like, y'all were actually dating, and then we found out. So. But what's the truth? This is your, this is your time to come out, come out and tell the truth, because we don't know. The, the timeline was different. I guess because we went on our first date on August 23rd. Okay. But you know, so in my mind, you kind of have those stages where it's like you meet somebody, you start dating, and then after Agreed. you date, then you're actually like going out as a couple. You are. So let me ask you this: then it's like your Did you ever? Did you ever like ask her like, "Hey, do you want to be like be exclusive?" Or "Hey, would you like to be my girlfriend?" Or was it kind of just inferred that after a couple, y'all were like, "We are mutually exclusive." Like, is that what happened? So I did ask that. Uh, okay. I asked it on December seventh, but leading up to that point, we were doing a lot of mutually exclusive things I I met her family before I ever asked her that no you didn't oh Oh, no you met my family yeah I met your mom oh yeah and and you met my family and what is what was this for when did she meet your family came in town she came down down on Thanksgiving and so remember when everyone we all went to Buffalo Wild Wings I don't remember this you were there. Right. The first time I met Dan, though, was at the TCU volleyball slash football game. Wait. So huh? did, was Dan not at Buffalo Wings with us? I know oh, it was. I don't think game. I was at no He was, ball but that, the TCU game was before then. I already knew Dan and Austin before I ever went down there. Interesting. Yeah. Now, so I do remember what I will say is I remember the OU TCU game um that year that i went well i went both years but the year like the first year that john was there i remember going and i'm assuming that is when yeah okay so yeah i definitely met her at the game then yeah now at i will say at the time i didn't know like this is your girl i don't think at that time so that was it was up in the air because throughout october you know, it was it was at that point that things were starting to get more serious between us, and I was really trying to figure out, like, you know, you know, the whole med school thing. Like, right. Is is this gonna, is this a good idea, basically? Yeah. 
Well, I just remember, and and the reason that there is this confusion, it's not like because I don't think y'all. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna say John was Mr. Secretive because he didn't know what he wanted to do. I'm assuming that's his reason because like he would send a snap, and it'd be like cube girls in the back, and we're like, we can't even see her. Like, what do you mean? But we always saw the same like body. We always seen, saw like the same arm. Like we. It was really weird because Austin and I became like really creepily good at being like, that's cube girl in the back. Like we just immediately knew like that's her, but we never could like, it was crazy because we never got like a quick picture. And back then you couldn't on Snapchat, like, you know, you couldn't do more than 10 seconds. So John would like send us something. And then like in 10 seconds, we had to deliberate like, yo, is that her? Like, let's try to like, like we were just trying to see like, is this her? Because I remember when you first introed her, I was like. I was like, well, what's her social media? Because that's just the first thing that I do when you or Austin brings up a girl. I'm like, I'm going to go look at her. And then what made it weird was like, you were like, nah, she ain't got one. I'm like, what? Like, no way. No way she doesn't have one. And then that's when I found her Facebook. And you're like, no, no, no. She has like that Facebook, but it's like super inactive. Like she doesn't post anything on it. I remember looking on it and like, yeah. it was like two years since her last post or something ridiculous. And I was just like, all right, yeah, but like... I- I guess she is not on here, but this seems fake. Like this seems like this seems like John's just lying to me about her I name. I didn't know that happened. Yeah, yeah John yeah, made it seem like like he gave us a fake name almost. Like we were just like, who is this fake name person? Like because think, he was literally hiding you. Like no joke, important. he was hiding you. Tell the truth, John. It's important though because it's not that I was intentionally. It's not that I was hiding her for any kind of negative reason, like because of her as a person. Right. It was, you know, I, I'm somebody who was so historically picky and choosy with girls in that I, Super. Didn't, want, I didn't want to present you to them, like my family, as, hey, y'all, this is my girl. And then it turns out that you are not somebody that I really am you know that i really feel that connection with and then i have to like retract that statement like oh yep i was wrong like, and see that's I what want that. and and see looking back now i think i kind of like that process goes through my head but still i will say it, it did throw me off that we didn't like at least see a good pick like i swear we never saw a good pick ever because like he was taking blurry snapchat photos like we could just never see and it was just like, dude, like, why are you hiding her from us? And then eventually we saw her and we're like, what's the deal? And I think that was kind of the thing. It was kind of like he was just nervous to fully commit Oh, like, this yeah. is my girl. And so we were like, oh, okay. Like, we understood that part of it. But, like, I just always was curious about it because, like, whenever we finally met her, we were like, wait, she's, like, cool. Like, what What was the big deal? Because I, I was trying to figure out, you know, I was trying to figure out what the deal was. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it was just like, what's going on? Like, cause once we met her, it didn't, it even made us more confused. Cause we're like, wait, she's really cool. What, why, why for like three months have you been hiding? But well, it makes sense you now. Know, whenever we first met though, like she wasn't as cool as she is now <laughs> because she, she was so reserved and you can just tell that she, she's opened she, up more. Yeah. Like she, she wasn't open at the time and that's, and that's rightfully so I think. Cause you know. I wasn't of fully course. open with her. She wasn't fully open. We were just trying to feel each other out. And right. I was about to say at the beginning, like, it's just a feeling thing. And so I wasn't sure, you know, because the person yeah. that she was at the beginning is, is was a really nice, polite, super quiet person that didn't really reveal that she has as strong of a personality as she actually Super does. quiet. Because I remember for the first year, that was kind of like the thing that we thought you and her had in common. We were like, man, both of them are just like quiet like if if it wasn't like if you weren't around us it was just like man like they're just quiet and i remember you telling us like no no like she's like she's not like super quiet and like reserved and all this and and then i will say it was probably about it had to be about a year was like a time that i can remember that we all like hung out and it was like oh she's like initiating conversation like she's making jokes and i actually think Dude, I want to say it might have been the second time. It wasn't at Buffalo Wild Wings the first time, which is funny because I remember it now. I remember the first time. It wasn't at the first time. It was the second time whenever I was dating my ex. Do you remember that? What what did we do? We went to Buffalo Wild Wings, and and my ex came in 
like from work and was like in a bad uh-huh. mood but Lindsay, i remember that day was in a way better mood like she was making jokes and stuff at the table oh oh no yeah i remember now i remember now yeah do you remember that one i don't remember being at buffalo wild wings i, I think only because we were at buffalo wild wings for like a split second like we were just yeah. like it was very little like i i'm we pretty were... sure we had all eight and everything and then it was like we were just leaving yeah mm-hmm. i i remember um Lindsay, would you agree with that assessment of of our initial beginnings? Yeah. Would you say that you were also a little reserved at the beginning? Like, you weren't fully committed? Or the moment you saw John, you saw the cube, were you just like, I really want to get to know him? Well, of course I wanted to get to know him, but I definitely, it takes me a while to trust someone. Got gotcha. you. And only the people who have earned my trust and really know who I am as a person get to experience the real me. So, yeah. And I will say, like, I don't, I wouldn't even say technically that, like, I, and you made this point at the beginning, like, I don't even think that I could say, like, myself, like, I really know you, like, as crazy as that is. Yeah, but you know enough. Yeah, I think I know enough. And a lot of it's from, like, a lot of it is from like John or like conversation I over here, something like that. So like I know enough, but yeah, it is. I can see what you mean, especially because like you live in Oklahoma. So it's not like we're interacting on a daily. I think that's another thing that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I, you know, like I said, I don't blame her because yeah. I think that's a smart move, especially because like so many guys nowadays are just scumbags. Dude, they're just straight scum. Try to use girls and. And I think that was one of the reasons I was taking so much time trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And, you know, at, at first, there, you know, there was actually a point in time whenever I, I, I tried to end it because I, I was afraid that I really wasn't going to give her 100%. And I was like, that's just not fair to her. And like, yeah. I, I, I wanted to, like, nip it in the butt before it really got going, so to speak. Right. And to almost not not save her, but to, like... Yeah, like, just you avoid. Know, yeah, just you know, avoid some issues that would happen that right. I thought would happen like a year or yeah, two yeah, down yeah. the road. Whenever I'm putting, I'm prioritizing other things above her. Right, right. And right. that was just the dumbest thing I could have ever done. I'm so glad that I'm glad that she didn't just like pack her bags and like slam the door behind her and never talk to me again. Yeah, <laughs> I was pretty fortunate that she stuck around for me. Yeah. So let's see. So how long have y'all been doing, quote unquote, like the distance thing? Like. Since July. Since June. July. June? Since June 18th was when I brought Oh, up. yeah. Since June. So June 18th was the last time that y'all lived in the same area. Yep. That's crazy. So. It's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you, like... but you do a good job of going to go see her, I will say. I mean, oh, yeah. if, if I'm being honest, you do a better job of seeing her than you see us. But, hey, that's fine. That's fine. No, that's it's fine. true, and I, and I do feel pretty guilty about it, I will say. That's fine. No, but it's understandable because, you know, it's one of those, like, you had, like, this relationship with her that was built on an everyday, like, thing where you see her, you communicate with her, you hang out, or, or in some manner you were with her. And mm-hmm. I know with me, you and Austin especially, like, the three of us when we created like our friendship or our little like whatever we want to call it like whenever we have our little family like it it was all built on distance almost at that part anyway like it was never like oh we're all hanging out like every day like you know what i mean like you and i were because we went to the same school worked at the same place but like with austin it wasn't yeah and and i think that that's one of the reasons that i i do go see Lindsay so often yeah i i just know that you know, we'll always just pick right back up. And yeah. I never have to worry about maintaining that relationship. Not that I couldn't with Lindsay. It's just, <laughs> I lose my mind when I'm not around Lindsay. Like, I don't right. know. I don't know what it is. It's like, you know, I, I've seen her every day almost for, you know, like two years. And then we and then we move away. And it's just like, I, I'm going nuts. Like, I don't know what to do. Right. So, okay. Let's go. We're going to we're going to put a pause on the, like this timeline because I mean, we're almost at the end of the, t- the you guys timeline. We skipped like the two years in between. But I mean, that's pretty, pretty cut and dry. I feel like hung out every day, went on dates, made it official, D- did basic boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. It wasn't like anything super. So we jumped to the you know, no, it was very thing. super. OK, super boring. You know, I will <laughs> say about us and, and I don't think that this is like unique to only us. 
but I will say I think it's unique to good relationships. What's up? And something I've never like really experienced is that she is somebody that I spent just an absolute tremendous amount of time with. Mm-hmm. And and I like quite literally seeing each other every day. And I I never it's like you could just I never could get enough. So you never got like bored with it never, is the easiest not, way. No, I I hate it. Like every single day I'm just texting her like I hate this. <laughs> and it, it's it's really bad sometimes cuz like sometimes I don't I mean it sounds really bad but like I don't even want to like FaceTime her sometimes because like whenever I just see her Yeah. Like, it's just it's just this reminder that we're not together and we don't live in the same place. Right. It's like this is awful like I miss you so much. I don't even want to see you because it's just gonna. Jeez. All right. Let's 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 stop it. Destroy me. The the uh, the emotion cast right now. Calm it down. Calm it down over there. I love it so much. Yeah, I know. I, I know you're. I know you're getting this. With but the like, biggest smile on my but face. my goodness, I don't want to hear this. Like, I know next thing I'm gonna hear is like Lindsay like tearing up, and then John's gonna be, and I'll be like, all right, this is pointless. Like. This is not where I wanted this to go. But it's just good. You know, it just feels really nice to have that kind of reinforcement where it's like, I'm not secretly happy that, like, we can't see each other. Or, like, I'm not happy that I'm away from her. Like, it, it sucks. And so I think that's a good thing. You know, I think it's a good reminder that it's like, you know, maybe I am dating the right person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's, let's pause on the sappiness for a second. Right. Pause right. on the sappiness. Are you tabling it? Are you done? Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Done pouring it on thick. <laughs> my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so my my question <laughs> my question was well mainly I guess it, well I can ask it to both of you. Both of you have siblings, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are any of your siblings? either married or in a like in a serious oh my gosh whoa 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 or in a serious relationship oh i'll start okay go ahead so i have an older brother and sister and a younger brother so you're older brother middle child almost yeah i'm the third okay okay older brother is 26 okay married with two kids and a baby on the way (laughs) okay yeah (laughs) <laughs> All right. And then uh, my older sister <laughs> is married and just had a beautiful baby girl. Okay. Like three months ago. How old is your older sister? Your age, I think. 24. Yeah. 24, okay. Yeah. And then there's you. Yep. 22, is that right? Three. 23? 23. Oh. And then a younger brother, is that what you said? Yes. And how old is he? 20. 20. Don't tell yeah. me he's married. Oh, no. <laughs> he, yeah, he's not even in a serious relationship. So. All right, nice, nice, nice. Good for yeah. him. Tell him to keep, <laughs> tell him to keep going slow there. But, uh, he's he's kind of got that. Uh, no, he doesn't. Come on. He like Does he KC really? Vibe, like the KC oh, vibe oh, oh. Before, before McKenna. Yeah, okay. okay. So I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he told me a girlfriend. A blow-up doll. Oh. And that made me really sad, because I think part of him, like, really wants to find a good girl. But then Ooh. the other part's just like, wow, I'm 20, I love my friends, let's go fishing and hunting every day. Look at the Whoa. pressure that, though, you know, he lives in Oklahoma. Like, that is just... true. Well, I was going to say, you know, I bet when you're that age, and everyone around, like... <laughs> It, it would be hard not to be like oh i want a relationship i think it's i think it's very mature of people when they can identify that they don't need a relationship but they might want one and by that is like some people like they don't need one like okay i'll put myself in the situation like right now i don't need one financially i don't need one like whether we want to agree or not like women cost cost money like and I think whenever you're young or at a certain point, like sometimes it's just like, well, it's just not smart to have a girlfriend right now. It's not smart to like do whatever, go on like dates. You don't have time to give to them. So it wouldn't be fair to them, et cetera. So I think it's fair on, it sounds like for him anyways, that, you know, he enjoys his friends and he knows that it would be unfair to the girl. Is that kind of like his Honestly, thought process? Honestly, I, I maybe, but I, I don't think he, or he doesn't thought... even try. 
Yeah, I don't think he tries. <laughs> he just doesn't you. even care right now. I'm telling you, he has that yeah. Casey vibe. Interesting. Okay, so John, you have siblings. Yep. Are they married? No. Not your siblings married to each other, like, no. <laughs> like, do, like, do they oh. have spouses? No. I have to tell you guys a crazy story after this. Okay, okay, make it quick, John. You said no. No, they don't. Are they in relationships with anyone? One of them. Okay, so nice. So none of them are married. So in theory, you could be the first one. Oh yeah. Ah, it's all right. Probably it's probably gonna be me. <laughs> it's probably gonna be you over them. Yeah. Is it? So. Well, actually, I don't know because he he's talking like it's gonna happen soon, so I don't know. Oh, is he likely to do it way quicker? Man, I can't tell. He's just one of those dudes that uh, I you never think, know. He could catch. I think he could catch a be whim. married before us. He could just catch a whim, and it all of a sudden it happens. That's how he is. Well, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I don't know what just happened. Lindsay, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Uh, he's one of those dudes that it's a pretty fresh relationship, but okay. it's progressing quick. So. Progressing real quick. Yeah, they're they're in infatuation. So okay, all right. Yeah, no. Interesting. Might pull the first. So you could miss out on be. Wait, are they older than you? No. <laughs> oh well. You're gonna miss he, out. You're older, you're not even gonna be first. He's older, barely, but she's younger. Gotcha. Well then, okay, interesting. All right, well, that that was just a little backstory. I was curious on that. Go ahead, Lindsay. Let's hear this funny story. What you got? Okay. I probably shouldn't tell you guys this because you're going to make fun of Oklahoma even more. <laughs> but pretty, pretty hard. So in a, in a small town near where I grew up, okay, there was a woman who married her son, who then the <laughs> this the is son... the most Oklahoma story. Okay, no, no, wait, it gets it gets better. The son divorced her. Because he married his sister. Uh, no. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> because the mom got pregnant and wanted an abortion, and he didn't believe in that, so he divorced her. I okay. don't know what happened to the kid or anything. And then she married her daughter. Oh. That's that's real. What? That so is son, real life. So son and daughter both married mom. Yep. What? Isn't that the craziest thing? What is wrong thing? with people? What is wrong with people? What? That's actually oh ridiculous. God. That's actually I'm quite ridiculous. It it's, I it's, I feel like this. It's real. Yeah, it was all in the news. Wow. Oh this is this is just sad. That is just a sad story, and that is just why Oklahoma sucks. Right there. Dan, don't even <laughs> talk about it. You don't even know. You've never been here. Well, I have been there. Oklahoma's not that bad. <laughs> Oklahoma I, sucks. I, I will say this. I think there are some parts of Oklahoma that are worse than others. That's for sure. If you're not in Norman, yeah. it's pretty bad. Even in Norman, it's eh. No, I mean, hey. I, Norman's not even my favorite city in Oklahoma. Oklahoma City is eh. Edmond's nice. You haven't even been to the town where I grew He's up, honey. Dan. He's so. honey digging now. <laughs> What? what? No, I. Calm down, honestly, there, bromance. Calm down. Honestly, I like Oklahoma. You don't. You don't have to pour in the pour in the the juice anymore. You got her. You don't have to like <laughs> Oklahoma anymore. Wait, it wasn't until like one or two months ago that he actually started saying that he likes Oklahoma. This is true. Whenever we met yeah. through the courtship, I used to just dog Oklahoma so bad. Jeez. Oklahoma still sucks. I don't understand. Actually, Actually, after the that first that night of Buffalo Wild Wings, she actually cried because we were being too hard on her. On Oklahoma? Wait, wait, we were being too hard on her about Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my. I don't think it was that night, but yeah, it did happen. Well, we apologize, but Oklahoma is bad. <laughs> You've never even lived here, so how can you know? It smells. What? Does it? Yeah. John, confirm. There, there is <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank See, you. The thing is, you are comparing your area to the entire state of Oklahoma. Which is true, and I don't think we can compare just our area to anywhere. 
because we are areas better than exactly than everywhere. Yeah. No, I'm comparing all of Texas. No, nah, you know that there's some sketchy parts of Texas that you don't want to go through. Oh, there's definitely some sketchy parts down by the border, of course. You know, I hear it's I hear it's rough down there. Yeah, I'm just saying as a whole. You ever been down there? Yeah, I've been deer hunting down there. Is it is it? Bad? And I've been it. and I've been honestly. I took a mission trip. We drove all the way through to Mexico in the border and dug some holes for these trees, dude. It was like I was in an episode of like the movie Holes. It was awful. Like it's I, pretty somebody, bad. Somebody who grew up there that we that we know from OU uh, said that it's basically Mexico down there. Oh no, it is, dude. We we got legit. Let me think. It had to be about thirty miles from the border, and it was straight Mexico, dude. It was just like dirt, nothing going on. You see like these little huts that are just like nothing that people are living in. You see, like these kids, just like in these, like in the street, like almost not wearing any clothes. They look like sunburned and stuff. Like it just is not good. And you're like, what the heck is going on here? And the next thing you know, you're at like the border. But what's crazy is whenever you're at the border of Mexico, it's really nice. I don't. You never. You probably never driven through, have you? No, no, no. So like, right at the border is really nice because what they do is they put all these shops and high end like, uh, like. It's like a market area, but it's like really nice and up clean because people will like cross the border to buy stuff for really cheap and then like come back. Mm. So like on like right on the other side of the border, it's like kind of nice like stuff over there, or at least it used to be. I don't know if it like went to hell already, but I remember crossing like the moment that we crossed, like it was really nice, and then it was like right past that, it got really bad. Yeah, I hear that um, all around the border, it's like the safest area you could be in yeah. because of all the border patrol and. A lot of those bad people avoid. still sketch bro still sketch because because what happens like you hear these stories about these people that like drive through and then they just get abducted like immediately mm-hmm. like they just tr- they just like follow you is my understanding like once you come through like they kind of like make a decision i don't know how i'm sure they have some type of like criteria of like how they have to look what they're driving what they're wearing and then they're like all right these are the people we're gonna follow and then they abduct them but like yeah, it's, dude. Mexico is crazy. Mexico's crazy. That's all we need. That's all we need to know. Mexico is out of control. Are you? Would what? you go there to vacation, or have you ever? Are you? Going yeah. To? Um, I have been there. It probably. Um, I want to say, how many times have I been actually in Mexico? Probably like six or seven. How many times have I been there for vacation? I want to say like four. But whenever we went on vacation, it was You've in this. That many times? It was in this. Yeah, it was in this guarded compound, like um, very gated. It was on the edge, uh, like of, of the ocean. So like the backdrop was like closed off. The front was like super high walls with barbed wire fence and like guards at the only entrance. You know, all the all the house workers like uh, they had like an on on site like place where they stayed. It was like this, but it was just like a house. It was weird. It was like. I don't know what you call it. It's not like a... I guess, like, you can call it an estate, maybe? Yeah. And, like, they just stayed there. So, like, it was very isolated from everything else. Let's just put it like that. Mm. So, you didn't actually go to, like, a resort, I guess? No, no, no. Um, the So, I will say, the couple times I went on a mission trip, which I think was just twice, we were straight up in the middle of, like, the worst areas ever, like... No joke, the place we stayed had no running water, no AC. It didn't even have, like, window units or anything like that, you know? Yeah. So, like, it was just awful. And we were there for, like, a week and a half. And, like, the whole reason we were there was we went to, like, this school that, like, wanted us to plant some trees for them. And literally, like, I wasn't joking. Like, it was a six-by-six six thing. So, like, you had this shovel and you had to lay it down and, like – the your shovel had to fit inside like the top of the circle so if it fit then the hole was big enough and then they came and dropped like these bigger trees in but it was ridiculous dude because like it it, uh, it was just absurd man and i remember like thinking back now that was probably not the safest thing because i remember a couple times like you would get done digging your hole and like we were like it had to be like half a mile away that you had to walk maybe a little more honestly it might have been like half a mile or like three quarters of a mile to a mile and like that you had to walk through like this town and like we used to just walk but sometimes like you would have the bus that came and got us but i remember multiple times just walking through the town with me and my cousin like 
very naive mm-hmm. and like playing but we still like it was cool because like we would walk and then we would go play at like the um like there was like this local park that was like a basketball court that really wasn't a basketball court because they were all playing soccer on it <laughs> like type thing but like it was it was interesting it was definitely like not the same experience i guess yeah i never realized you went to mexico yeah yeah um a couple times actually are you gonna go back um i hear that is not very safe to go back now like at See, all that's what i thought but then i keep hearing about people going to like cancun and stuff so i don't know now i'm sure so like my parents went two years in a row last year and the year before that and the the company my mom works for has like they actually have one of those resort type things there and that's where they go so like from the moment they get off the air like from the moment they get off the airplane you know they're they're not having to rent a car or anything they just hop into like an uber of sorts down there but you know the driver comes picks them up takes them immediately in the compound and then that's it like once they're in they're in like they don't go like walk around they don't go like explore the area like they're literally just in the compound and they just bring everything to them so like chefs come in and cook for them and stuff like that so like there were a couple times i think where they went down to like the beach but the resort was like above the beach so they just went down there it wasn't like they weren't at like ever super risk or anything like that hmm yeah, because I think you get in trouble, like, whenever you start trying to, like, explore, you get into areas, like, you don't know, and then it's just not a good idea there. See, that's the thing is, like, I, the people that I've talked to that have been, I've all said mm-hmm. really good things. Yeah. But I'm, I'm just apprehensive, because I, I just don't know how safe it is. I think you just have to do it right. Like, I don't think you could do it, like, you vacation anywhere else where you're, like, I'm gonna go to, like, let's say you want to go to, like, California, right? Like, you could just book a hotel you could just book your flight and they'd be like oh yeah i'll just get there and like once you get there you could just be like oh let's just go walk around today you know what i mean but once you get to like mexico it's like you better have everything like planned out you better have someone like that has been referred to you to like show you around like if you want to go sightsee like you know like you got to do a lot of like checking up almost Mm -hmm. so i think i think that's a i think that's a big big key i guess interesting yeah I don't know. How did we just get on that tangent? How did we get on Mexico? Uh, talk about South Texas. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. South Texas. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay, so I guess, you know, we were we were dog in Oklahoma. So let me ask let me ask you this, Lindsay. If you could live anywhere, where would you live? Any state, sorry. Any state in the United States, where would you live? Well, why not just anywhere? No. Uh, we'll, we'll start in the United States. Mm. am i what's my situation uh i mean you're pretty well off like you're above middle class like you're slightly above middle class how about that and i have a job yeah but your job job? is your job is allowing you to work from home and be located anywhere and your home office can be written off there you go so you can live anywhere in the u.s but that's their contention. It has to be in the U.S. I don't know. I'll step up and answer while Lindsay thinks. Okay, go. And it's well. Can you? I'll just give you. Uh, let me see. Where would you think I would say? I'm just curious. Me? Yeah. Well, it's your guess for what I'm about to say. Oh man, I'll this... give you a hint. It's not Texas. Well, Norman, I know Oklahoma. that. Oklahoma. I know that. I would guess. I would start really. I would say no. I. I don't think anywhere west coast i don't think you would like to be down south really i think you'd like to be in the northeast the problem is if i had to guess i think you would say sh- chicago that's, so that's a really say. that's a really good guess but actually i think uh and now to be fair it is more likely that i would li- like chicago more than this place having been to chicago and i've never been to this place but you say like rhode island what are you about to say I really think I'd like to go to Minneapolis, Minnesota. Like, wow, interesting. That's weird. There's just something. I just What's hear, even in Minneapolis? I, I hear amazing things about Minnesota, and like everybody says, they they really like it, and it's like a mini Canada. Like, there's still yeah. like a bunch of trees. I heard that too. It's nice and cold up there. Let me like, look this crap up. That's. I think that's where I. Bruh, like to go. this is but way cold. What is wrong with you? I love Chicago. Like, honestly, being, like, that Chicago trip was amazing. 
Okay, so Chicago yeah. would probably. So for be me, yeah. I would say either Chicago or somewhere in New England. Okay. So remember the whenever we say Chicago, like we're talking about like Oak yeah, Brook. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or... You're not talk. Yeah, yeah. We're, like, but we're just using Chicago as a reference. Yeah, like twenty, like twenty minutes away from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about living in Chirac itself. <laughs> although, I mean, although whenever we went to like Millennium Park and like East, like the East Side of Chicago, mm -hmm. really nice. Like never yeah. ever felt it's, unsafe. It's really like... just the South and part of the West Side that's scary. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's how I know you you two just don't like outdoors enough. You're just gonna go up there and freeze your freaking bums off. <laughs> like Man, I outdoor I like activities cold. squashed. In the winter. I mean they have pleasant spring and summers. They actually have uh spring. They have they have they have salt they have holidays. They have all four or all four seasons. Seasons, yeah. yeah. You know, down here we have summer and then yeah, that's fall. fine. That's fine. We have summer and fall, and that's I it. like the I like the heat. That's fine. <laughs> you would never live up north. No, no chance. What's your What's your ideal place? Where if you live anywhere? Uh, Colleyville, Texas. <laughs> what? Honestly, that's, that's I, like, I might I might take Holland Park over our over our Carlyhood. Nah, I like Carlyhood. Highland Park's got too negative of a stigmatism to it. Well, people are just mad because they're better than everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Kyle was like, Kyle was like a notch below. Have you figured out your place? Yeah, I said either Chicago or somewhere in the New England area. Somewhere in the New England area. Yeah. She's trying to go live so in like, like Boston. For me, just because I have never visited true New England, but just the. Like what you see in movies and hear about, I don't know, just the feeling that I get whenever I see that in the winter and fall, I don't know, it just makes me want to move there. Dang, so like y'all straight up, if y'all get, get married, y'all are just going to do white Christmases and <laughs> later coziness and I don't know, it just, it seems like a cool place to live. Yep, see y'all never. I also love L.L. Bean, so if I lived in New England, <laughs> I could wear L.L. Bean all the time. Yep, see y'all never. All I'm hearing is y'all are trying to go reside in the cold, so I'm going to tell be you right fair, now, though, I ain't going to visit. After our Chicago trip, I, I thought, you know, maybe the cold isn't for me. The cold is cold. And it wasn't even that cold. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even that cold. <laughs> it wasn't even super cold yet. Awesome. Like, yeah, I, I just don't know, man. I think she really wanted me to go to Chicago, I think. Yeah, it's just, it's so expensive. If Arkansas wasn't super, like, whack, pretty much, like, the people, I would live in Arkansas. I actually just got a call from a school in Arkansas a couple days ago. Because I think Arkansas is, like, the perfect medium. Like, it's not nearly as hot as Texas. The hunting is still good. But, like, there's enough of seasons up there. Like, they actually have, like, winters, and they have, like, springs. Now, I don't, I'm sure they have a fall. But, like, they have, like, a decent amount. Huh? How far up are we talking? Like, Fayetteville area? Like, north Arkansas? Yeah, I mean, you could just be up in, like, Fayetteville area, and it's it's not, like, they actually, it's nice up there. I mean, I went to a hockey tournament in Arkansas once. I think yeah. it was around Little Rock, and... And I really thought it was nice. Like there was tons of trees, and I thought it looked like a nice state. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, uh, I think it's got a lot going for it, minus the fact that just like the people, like I said, they're just <laughs> there's something else, dude. That's all we can That's, say. The thing though is that, like, do you ever feel like? Like I'm pretty see, sure their slogan because... is the natural state. Like I think that I'm gonna look this up. Because we, because sure we grew up that. like where we did, kind of in like that suburban area, do you ever feel like you could live <laughs> in like a big city, like in downtown, or do you think that, or do you ever think you could live in like the country, like a rural, like the sticks? Pause. First off, it is definitely called the natural state. <laughs> like, what is going on there, man? Um, now to answer your question. Do I think I could live in like the city city area or do I think I could live in like the country? I will say now 
um, after spending a couple like winter breaks and stuff out in like the actual country for hunting or working on like a ranch or something, it was awful. I'll never do it ever, ever. There's nothing to do, dude. The country's like, I, awesome. Like, like I understand why they're all strung out on drugs. Like, I I sympathize with them. Like, I understand why like most of these people in the country are doing drugs. Like, uh, I, I not believe most. It. Okay, most. Not you. Mm, quite a few, but not most. <laughs> okay, we'll agree to disagree on that one. But a lot of, let's say a lot of people, we can agree on that. A lot of people out there, like, I mean, there's nothing else to do, dude. It's like, it's like tech. Like, whenever people are in text tech, there's just nothing to do. Like, you talk to people that are there, and they literally, like, like, like my dad's boss, he's literally like, yeah, all there is to do in tech is smoke do drugs and get drunk and it's like and that's true what else are you gonna do go play in the dirt read a book watch what? a tv show go for a run walk a dog yeah that gets boring <laughs> after a while i mean no, I, no one's doing that yeah i can see how it would be hard like i don't i i will say as i get older i think the idea of living more rural is becoming more appealing but uh, I do think that I I think I need that like suburban blend. Yeah, I think it's perfect. Like I don't know if I could do full city mainly because I just don't like traffic. I, cause people just can't drive, dude. Like if people could just learn how to drive, I could live in the city. Like I think living that like high end like skyscraper lifestyle would be really freaking cool. Like I think that would be the way I would want to live. But I need it to be in an area that's not like not like Dallas, like our area where it's like for majority of the day you're just stuck in traffic like that's that's dumb that's dumb yeah the thing about dallas that kind of stinks is that it's it's so big that there's just so many people but it's also kind of spread out and i think that it it has like a way different dynamic from like new york city where it's it's gigantic but you can you don't need to drive like it's not as spread out and yeah you can actually get it's landlocked yeah like everything that you need is like around within walking distance essentially yeah yeah, so if I could just find like an area, I guess like I don't know. Nah, I ain't living there. I don't think I don't think you're ever gonna leave. I don't know. I don't see you. I'm definitely not. Are you crazy? <laughs> you're gonna stay here forever. Yeah, man. That's just the thing. Like, I I do think our area is amazing, but I don't know. Part of me just wants to experience just other areas. Yeah, I mean, hey, I say go experience it. Go have fun. Honestly, Whatever. I really stores that happens. I would love to live in like Spain or Switzerland or something. Like I would. Yes. I'd like to Switzerland. Go to Let's go to Monaco. Scandinavia. Let's go live in Monaco. Yeah. Or that. Y'all have fun with that yet again. Y'all I need to. I, I need to start a couple of Fortune 500 companies before I go live in Monaco. I want all of the perks of America and Europe combined. That is my ideal location. I mean, I really, I think like a country like Switzerland or like the Netherlands would be really good. Yeah. All right, let's talk. Let's let's change the subject real quick because we are getting to the end of the show. But I want to talk about a couple things because since both of you are Oklahoma people, I guess. Boomer sooner, baby. Well, besides Boomer sooner, I wanted to talk about real quick, real quick. I know Lindsay, you like OKC. What what's the deal with them? They just like suck. Like, what's up? So, I, I... John, are you Lindsay? <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> I will be honest. I have not been keeping up with them. Wow. About the you just need to know favor. they suck. But go, John. <laughs> I don't have time for anything. She's pretty busy. Uh, yeah. There have been many games that they are like blowing out opponents, and then they just choke. You think that's just like an identity crisis thing going on with them? Like they don't know who to like who to let close out the game or what? Like it's weird. it just doesn't even like, make sense. It seems like they kind of get lackadaisical. It's like we're stomping this team up by like you know fifteen at half, eleven at half, whatever. And like we can just kind of let off the gas and then. I feel like they've always been like that though. This dude is literally saying we. Oh my god. No, I was saying like that's like what they are saying. I w- that would be in quotation marks. First of all, you're a weird. You're a weird. 
I am a San Antonio Spurs fan. I am Too not, late. You're a weird. I am not. You a don't get to try to even fan. save this. We're moving on. <laughs> We're moving on. You're a weird. It's fine. So let's move on to some Boomer Sooner. Oh, okay. I am way more knowledgeable about this. So on Saturday, they play TCU. Mm-hmm. And pretty much if they lose, they might not be in the top four. Oh, my gosh. Can Is we... that what I'm hearing? While we have this platform, I, I need to use. No, this I don't want to hear you rant. I don't want to hear you rant about no. how OU's getting just screwed this over. This needs to be said. All right, say it. I'm cutting it. Go. I'm not gonna say it. Right <laughs> don't leave it in. Cut. It, I just it, made a time code stamp. Leave. No. All right. I'm not gonna. Say go it. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. If you're gonna cut it, I'm not saying it. I might put bits and pieces. <laughs> Maybe I make like a mashup of it and make you sound like really cool or something. All right, come on. What you got? It's a travesty that OU was still number three after last week. Oh, if that's all you're saying, I like that then. I thought you were gonna that's pull. All you had to say. I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna pull an Oklahoma soapbox and get on there and just bleed your heart out and bleed, bleed crimson. And I love Baker. My son's name is Baker Where Mayfield. Baker? Yeah. I Anybody wish Baker Mayfield was a woman. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Josh anybody, loves Baker. Just loves knows Baker. <laughs> knows that there's no reason after all the events of last week that Oklahoma should still be number Here three. comes That's the soapbox. Wait, and who's one and blasphemy, two? It's blasphemy that OU's offensive line was not in the finalist for the best offensive line in the country. That's blasphemy. Number one is Clemson. <laughs> number two is Auburn. Ah. And number four is... Wisconsin. So yeah. what I'm hearing is y'all lose and you ain't in the top four. All I'm saying is we were number three last week. Alabama was number one. Miami. Yep. Was Miami number two? Uh, yes. Pretty I don't sure. Know on that one. I think so. In, in any case, they both lose. We blow out a team bad enough that our starters don't play the second half, but we stay at number three. I don't know how that makes Weren't sense. Weren't y'all playing Baylor? No, we played West Virginia. Oh. Have y'all played four, Baylor yet? Okay, seven yeah. four still buns. Have, haven't y'all played Baylor? Yeah, Baylor played us really let's, close. Let's that real quick talk played. about the fact that Baylor hasn't Baylor even won a game, dude. No, they did. They beat Kansas. When? Last week? No, like two or three weeks ago, I think. Oh. They're, they're one and 11. They're still awful, dude. Like, that program went so downhill. All the rapists were in the league of football players there, apparently. Yeah, it, it killed the recruiting. Like, that's just sad, dude. Everybody decommitted from there, pretty much. I mean, wouldn't you? Heck yeah, I'm not trying to be around people that do that. Right. And honestly, like I, like they deserve they deserve that. You know, if they're gonna oh, have an sure. administration that harbors that, like that's not okay. Yeah. All right. So let's see. What was my? I had another point. I can't just can't remember my point. Oh, so what? Ha, so I remember my point now. Let's just say, let's just say, that Oklahoma loses to TCU. Is there mm-hmm. any chance that they get to play and be a top four team or what? TCU? No. Oh, you. Oh, no. You don't think so? Uh, I mean, some people think that there is a way just because, see, this is the thing that people don't like to admit because technically OU lost to an unranked Iowa State, who, by the way, did really great this year. But in any case, uh, OU has three top 15 wins. And so on paper – Right now, they have the strongest case to be number one in the country. Like, they have the best quality wins in the country. Like now, Auburn, Auburn did just beat Alabama. Right. But Alabama you gotta give them really, some props on that. Y'all Alabama get smashed in by Alabama anybody this year. Alabama hasn't beaten anybody this but year. But let's best, say OU Alabama's probably get smashed in by Alabama. No, I actually don't think so this year. That's why all the OU fans were scared whenever they got put number four and they saw that they were going to be playing Alabama. No. <laughs> they were like, Alabama, oh, please, no. It's not the same Alabama. I promise. Bro, Alabama's still Alabama. But but I will say they're not as good as they used to be. They're not but, even close to as good as they dude, used to be. They, you put it, you put a killer in the game, in, in the playoffs and killer's going to win. Nah, Mississippi State played them to a touchdown. Nah. Not the same Alabama. Remember when we beat them in the Sugar Bowl? <laughs> no, us us non yokels don't care about that stuff. Seriously, John does. That's their only good win is Alabama over LSU. Yeah, John does care about that stuff actually. 
but John's a yokel. You heard him saying we, so I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't hey, know I'll what say you, I'm a big I'm a big OU football fan. I don't know what else you want from me. All right, real quick, real quick, my other my other thing, uh, kind of world newsy, but I want to get an opinion on it, dude. Have you seen this this Bosnian like warlord dude that killed himself like in court? No. What? Dude, oh, the guy okay. who drank poison? Yeah, dude. So yeah. like, wait, somebody said this, or somebody mentioned something about drinking poison, but I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah. So this dude was like heavy warlord, dude. Got all these war crimes. Like, definitely was guilty. And just, yeah, just, just wasn't, wasn't the greatest guy. And then just in court, like, knocks back this thing. It almost looks like a five-hour energy, like, like, that's how tiny it is, right? And all of a sudden, he just knocks it back. Boom, dead. He's like, Bosnian? Yeah, um, his name's, like, Yugoslav. Yugoslav, or no, it's, Bosnian it's, poison yeah, Bosnian poison up. should come up, but his name's I like just typed in Bosnian and it came up. Yeah, dude. It's ridiculous. Oh, he's a war criminal. Yeah, yeah like dude. He's a warlord. What? 20 year prison sentence. Homie just couldn't handle it, bro. Drunk the so poison. I just... Am I about to see this dude die? Uh, I don't know where you're at. I haven't been able to find a video watching him die. I see him like drink it and then the video's cut. Mm. I don't see him like so, straight die. So what? So what's the story behind it? Do you know? All I know is 20 years, bro. He knew he's about to be guilty. Homie just knocks it back. Like, that's it. I just saw him drink it. Everybody's like, just like, what's going on? Like, he literally, like, I think before he drinks it, he says something like, I have taken poison. Or, yeah, yeah, I think he says something like, hold on, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Upon hearing the verdict has been upheld he screams or he says i have taken the poison wow so his offenses occurred like what oh whenever yugoslavia was broken up in the 90s like bro so this was so this was just a bad dude i guess yeah and he like i think he was this was an appeals court like it was an appeals court i'm pretty sure like the dude was already in like prison for a little bit yeah it was literally an appeals court wow like my goodness, that's just crazy to me, dude. When did that happen? I really want to say it was like yesterday. I think I saw it. Maybe it was wow. two days ago. Yeah, stop watching Fortnite videos and get on the news, John. My goodness, that's crazy. All right, that is gonna probably be towards the end of the show. Yeah. But let's let's end on like something happy. Anyone have anything happy you like to talk about? Because I really don't have anything happy. To be I honest. didn't fail my tax exam. I took today. okay. Didn't fail tax exam. That's always good. Never failing. Wait, have you actually, real quick, have either of you actually ever failed an exam? No, I I got a C once. <laughs> what, what about I, you, Lynn? I have not failed, but I have made pretty bad grades. What? Worse than C's. Isn't that failing? Oh, it depends on how you look at it. Okay then. <laughs> okay then. You want to take a guess at my worst score ever? Just guess. Your worst grade? Worst, worst test ever. Forty-two. Ooh, that's pretty good. Oh, I was gonna say like fifty-six. Nah, bro. Straight up thirty-two. Dang. What? In what class? I think it was uh, biology, freshman year of college. I think. Or uh, bl- uh, blend. Yeah, just didn't even know the test was like there that day. Oh, it was like straight walked class. in and everyone has like scantrons. I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, did you not look at the syllabus? I'm like, what? No. And then the chick next to me was like, here, you can have one of my scantrons. I'm like, oh no. Yeah, straight bomb that mofo. Wait. And really? there was a lab portion of it, dude. And the lab portion was even harder. Like he literally, like we walked in, no joke, no joke. We walked in, he had five pictures on the table and like you walked in and you had to identify like what it was. That sounds easy. It's probably easy if you know, like, if you if you actually know what you're doing, dude. I used to sit in that class, eat like, uh, they had these, they had this food truck that was right outside of it, and I would get food and walk in there, sit in the back, eat my food all class, and then get out of there. And then, and then in the, and then in the actual classroom part of it, I was just like, it was like the first class. It was a, it was a eight a.m. class, dude. 
straight up slept in that thing. That was awful. I, uh, it was funny as whenever I think back to that time, I don't even picture you in class down there. I picture you just like working and playing COD. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds about right. And then Pretty much waffles. what he was doing. Sounds you on the like. waffle grind. Yeah, dude, I was grinding. And your boy was nasty on the sticks. Don't forget it. <laughs> well, Mac, and I, Mac and I came down there and visited you. Oh, and yeah, I'll... I forgot about that. Yeah, we came down there. Dude, that was a weird one. We're going to have to say that for a different podcast. Talk yeah. about talk about all the college shenanigans and stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> but all right. Um, let's see. Any parting words, John? You want to say anything to anybody? Shout out anybody? You know, the usual. Man, you know, just my sponsors, but I've already listed them below. You know, thank you to everybody that keeps me going. Perfect. Lindsay, anyone you want to shout out? Your my dog, mom. your mom. My okay. dog. Oh, I'd like to shout out Lindsay's dog as well. Uh, your dog. Isn't the greatest. Your do- Isn't that what? your dog also? Oh, it's Lindsay's dog. More so mine. Yeah, now, but before it was like a team. It was like a, it was not a team. It was going to be a team dog, and then Lindsay. Let's not call it a team dog. Team dog is like, that sounds weird. That <laughs> sounds weird. <laughs> Like, all of a sudden, there's, like, a group of, like, 10 people that are like, yeah, it's our dog. Like, no, Lindsay's, no. Lindsay's love for that dog is just so much greater than my love for it. And I love it a lot, but it's not yeah. even close. That's her dog. We, I mean, honestly, <sighs> I think if I were an animal, I would be my dog. We have the same personality. Okay, on yeah, that Lindsay's note, on that note, now. we're cutting this. That <laughs> That's it. That's it. She <laughs> wants to be her dog. You heard it here first. <laughs> all right guys well i hope you enjoyed the video as usual make sure to leave a like comment turn on post notifications so you know when new ones are coming up and lastly follow all the social media links down below as we stated Lindsay won't have any but i'll have mine john will have his no women follow him all right peace that's right i'll find you